Yum, yum. Hey everybody, Adam here with a quick tip for matching colors between images. Here I have an image that's approved by the client and I have a couple of others that I want to match. So in this case, uh, I can see that the car paint has a certain look to it. It's about, uh, you know, it's, it's a very light gray, something approaching white. But if I go to the top view, uh, the whole image looks a little bit too dark. Now there are a couple of ways that I can deal with this. One of them uses the Kelvin plugin. I'm going to show you that one. And that's an old technique that I've shown in the past. I'm going to show another technique though that lets you laser focus on a specific part of the image. It's a very cool hack and one that I used just this week and no, no plugins are required to do this. So let's go back to that primary three quarter image and say this is the image that's our gold master. Now to match the overall lighting, we're going to use the Kelvin color card. In this case, uh, the Kelvin meshes has a color card utility built in. And if I show that color card here in my scene, you'll notice that our gold master image has very balanced lighting. Now I can tell that because there are no no circles visible within the rectangular colors uh, of the color card. If I switch, however, to the top view, you'll notice that those circles become very apparent. Now the circles in this case represent the true color of each one of those squares, whereas the squares themselves are actually lit by the scene. If we can get the squares to match the circles, we know that the colors are balanced. So in this case, all I have to do is take this top light and knock it up, uh, let's say to four watts, for example, that looks pretty good. In fact, I think I probably need to go up to four and a half or five and that's looking more like it. You can see the circles have pretty much completely disappeared within their rectangles, telling me that now I have a very balanced lighting situation in this image. Now, a different scenario though, is to look at this rear view. Now in this one, I've already matched the overall lighting using the color card, but you can see that the car paint still looks too dark. This is because the car paint is reflective and whenever you have reflections in a scene, things get a little bit persnickety. Having the overall lighting is not good enough. We're going to need to laser focus on a specific part of the image in order to get what we want. And this is where the cool hack comes in. The one that I wanted to demonstrate today, the real reason for this video. So let's hide the color card for a, sec for a second. I'm going to show this mesh called sample. And if I zoom in on that, you'll see it's just a subdivided cube. It's a little circle and I hit M for material. And and gave it a material here in my shader tree. If I select that, you will notice that it has a shader. Now in that shader, I have told it to be invisible to indirect, reflection, refraction, and occlusion, and it does not cast shadows or receive shadows. That means that uh, I can effectively control its color independently of the lighting in the scene. So if I go to the material, I can zero out the diffuse, the specular, and the Fresnel, and look only at the material trans properties and set its luminous intensity to one watt. I can then set it to be any color I like. In this case, if I make it bright red, you'll see a bright red dot appear here in the render. But uh, in this case, I have uh, adjusted the gray to where it just barely is visible on this uh, rear fender. I know that I have uh, a very close match between the color of the fender and this uh, circle itself. Now, when I go to that rear three quarter, we can see exactly how bad our problem is. I can see that uh, the color, as defined by my color sample, is much lighter than the rear uh, fender on this image. So what I need to do is go to the light that is lighting that part of the image here and bump that up until that circle starts to disappear within the fender. We can see now we are much closer in fact, I can hardly see that circle at all, telling me that the car paint, at least, is now matching very closely with that original image. So in this case, if I show the color card, you see that the, uh, the overall lighting here is actually somewhat brighter than in the original Goldmaster image, but I know that my reflection lighting is exactly what I want it to be, and that's what matters in this particular case. So I hope that technique is helpful to you. I actually just used it in a project this week, and it is incredibly useful to have both of these tools at my disposal as I'm lighting batches of images for product rollouts and things like that. Hope that's helpful. We'll talk to you soon. See ya. Yum, yum.